What's going on, music fans? Welcome back to last week's album, where we're talking about good music. Before we kick things off, let's start like we always do, drinking a beer. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, Derek, and everyone drinking and watching at home. This week's album, we are looking at Back to Soft by a band called Coke Weed. No, I did not just stutter. Uh, this is a quintet based out of Bar Harbor, Maine, a hotbed for psychedelic indie music these days. And they are led by Mylon McAlevey, who uh, is the lead songwriter. He, was, uh, he played in some New York City and Brooklyn bands for a while before starting Coke Weed with uh, Nina Dongia. Uh, who is the female lead vocalist, and I apologize to everyone if I just butchered your names. I'm terrible at reading. Uh, Back to Soft is their third album, and before we go much further, let's uh, check out what it sounds like. Kevin, what do you think? All right, uh, I have Coke Weed, at least on this album. Back to Soft sounds like classic psych rock that's both hungover and still buzzing. That's pretty good. All right, see, I kind of took a different ap approach here. I said, back to soft sounds like a disoriented day of self-discovery at the beach. So <laughs> before we, uh, so let's go right into top tracks. I had Anklet, Poison, and Sunseekers. What about you, Kevin? Uh, I also have Anklet and Sunseekers, but my third key track is Mary Ann. Marianne, all right. That one also made my cut as well. Uh, so I guess let's kick it off with the opening track, Sunseekers. Uh, this one I thought started off with some fuzzy dueling electric guitar riffs accompanied by a, an understated cymbal snare drum beat. Uh, the chorus incorporated a lot of really intricate layered vocal harmonies, which I really liked. And the bridge kind of came out of nowhere and really expanded on those uh, guitar riffs and just they really kind of explored the different sounds and really kind of allowed the uh, feedback and other uh, noise to kind of come together uh, for a really cool bridge. Uh, those are some of the highlights for me. What do you think, Kevin? Uh, I liked Sun Seekers because it had this sort of bluesy bass guitar drum mood with like a touch of psych. Um, as you mentioned, the vocals are really good. The female vocals especially uh, stand out to me here as on a lot of tracks. Um, even though they do the boy-girl uh, vocals here and there. Um, but here I thought that Nina's were warm yet cold and emotional yet detached. Um, I also really liked the bleeding guitar solo and the killer percussion. And overall, it sounded like the mamas and the papas meet those darlings. And uh, just started off the record really strong with a great introduction to their very unique sound. So that's why I dug it. Absolutely, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I, I too, really thought the vocals were emotionally had to touch. I thought that's a great description, Kevin. Um, I guess let's jump to the next one we both picked as key track, Anklet. Uh, this was the first single off the album. Uh, once again, kind of similar instrumentation, uh, bass, snare, cymbal, drumby kind of moves things along uh, against a rising legato electric guitar riff. Uh, which at times borders on piercing feedback, which I thought was kind of cool that they were able to rein in that sound while at the same time almost letting it get out of control, which I thought was kind of a cool thing. Uh, once again, cool, mellow vocal melodies. Uh, the female vocals, once again, took the lead here. Lyrics kind of tell an interesting story of falling in love, only to fall out of love, which that is lost on the oblivious uh, uh, partner in the situation uh, kind of leads to an interesting type story. Uh, what do you think, Kevin? Oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was adjusting my anklet. Um, I really liked this song for the snappy drums, blaring guitars right from the start, these sultry stoned lead vocals from Nina, who here reminds me of Nico from Velvet Underground fame. It's got these spooky male backing vocals and this really sloppy, in a good way, uh, sludgy guitar freak out and uh, it's the first single off the album and it's it's really good at encapsulating their sort of hypnotic slow burn which this band is phenomenal at you hear that 
um, on a lot of different tracks, but in a lot of different ways, and always keeping it fresh. But they are really, really good at that sort of a slow burn, if you will. So that's why I dug Anklet. Nice, nice. Well, I think I'm going to jump in with my uh, key track that differed from the ones we selected. I picked Poison. Uh, this one kind of kicks off with some really kind of loud, uh, big guitar sounds, kind of this seesaw motion type guitar riff. And then it really switches pace to a much more understated, uh, less distorted guitar sound. And both those riffs kind of reminded me of the Pixies, uh, heavily kind of going there. Uh, once The female vocals, once again, took the lead. And uh, once again, cool, icy, calm, collected vocals there. Just kind of the overall combination of all those really made for a solid track. Yeah, um, I enjoyed that one as well. But uh, my third key track is Marianne, which is sort of different here for Coke Weed. It's the first real upbeat um, jam on the album, and it's it's way upbeat. It's by far the probably fastest moving track on the album, and uh, it's this really good southern rock foot stomper, scorching guitars, pounding drums, tambourine hits, boy girl vocals together, um, and a really good line. Uh, I've been crying since I was born, which wow. um, when you hear in the context of the band, they're really good at at these sort of throwaway one liners that cut really deep, but are also just kind of tossed off like it's nothing. They're really good um, lyrically in that regard. Man, that's a good one. Yeah, that just barely missed my cut. That was another solid track. Um, all right, so let's jump to best lyric. Uh, mine comes from Anklet, uh, where they say, you were so close, caught a clue, but then you choked. You see an Anklet spinning in the undertow. That is a good one, and I also picked my uh, best lyric from Anklet, except I went for a different line that goes, I'm going to ice you out until you start to get it. And that, for me, I just went, damn. Um, Nina is really good at these sort of icy, cold, cut straight to the bone uh, one-liners, and that was probably the best one I heard. So, Absolutely. I think Anklet was full of those, actually, just kind of the way the song all comes together. That, that one especially has a lot of them. Yeah. All right, so let's jump to overall rating. I gave this four out of five. There are a lot of really good things going on on Back to Soft. They really do an excellent job, I thought, transitioning between some of these larger uh, guitar-fueled sounds and then transitioning quickly to a very uh, more soft or subtle sound uh, without missing a beat between those. I, it, and sometimes they're very drastic. Uh, two examples I thought where they really did that was Desert Sleeper and Poison, as I just discussed. Uh, the alternating, uh, alternating male-female vocals, although, as you may have gathered from our review, the female vocals often uh, take the lead. But the ability to have both sexes be able to tell stories, I thought, really gives them a lot of options as far as how they want what type of stories they want to tell or what type of point of view. I thought that really is a positive credit for them because it allows them a lot of flexibility. Overall, though, I felt back to soft swayed more towards the soft than I would have liked, and I would have liked maybe a little more heavy or a little more upbeat, as you mentioned there with your last key track. But overall, they did a lot of things really well, and I really enjoyed what they're doing here. Yeah, uh, I am going to agree with your rating of 4 out of 5 and give them the same. Four out of five. Um, they are, yeah, just to, you made a good point, really dynamic band moving from big uh, grand sounds down to the more stripped down stuff. Um, and they're also really good at these just sort of, as I mentioned earlier, hypnotic slow jams. Um, it's really hard to make a slow song um, hypnotic, for lack of a better word, or want to make you keep listening without getting bored. And they do that really, really well. And I haven't heard anyone this put out an album um, as full of as many strong, slow tracks since, I think, Dawes' debut album, North Hills. It was also full of slow songs, but you kept you listening from start to finish. Um, and they're great at applying their unique sound to all different types of uh, tracks and vibes, and their instrumental prowess is nothing to be laughed at. It reminded me of Explosions in the Sky at times. Um, and again, like you mentioned, the vocals still add a lot, too, as well. So... Strong third album here from Coke Weed. 
I will agree with you, Derek. I think the only downside for them is they might not get a lot of radio play with this band name, but who am I to judge? You can say both those on the radio. Maybe just not at the same time. I don't know, maybe context thing, who knows? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. Four out of five from both Kevin and I. This is a great album. Go check it out. Coke Weed, Back to Soft. There you have it. Thanks again for joining us at last week's album. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button above that says subscribe. And check us out next week where we will be talking again about good music. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, I'm Derek. And I'm Kevin. Check you next time.